What's good, guys? This is the link up, of course, today. It's always amazing to be here. I'm not going to lie, all right? Today, we're taking a whole new dimension, all right? Um, uh, it's a part of the industry that we all ingest so much and love these guys for the amount of creativity and hard work they put into this stuff. And then we keep seeing different dimensions, all right? But first, ladies and gentlemen, let me welcome one of my favorites, one of your favorites, Oluwa Dollars. Yeah. That's what's up. <laughs> what's going on, my guy? Right, man, bless, man. bless, bless, bless. It's nice fresh, to have you man. here. Same here. I'm happy to be here. You say what? I say just a fresh. <laughs> just a <day> play. <laughs> <laughs> no, look, man. It's, it's nice to finally have you here, man. Yeah. yeah how, how, how have you been? How are you? Just, just been chilling, you know, having fun, being creative, working, making money. Yeah? Yeah. How's the country affecting you? In every way, man. From the traffic to the fuel to the weightings are just being more expensive. So the way dollar is winding us, everything. What's your lower dollars? You know, it's like, yeah, it's like I go change the animal. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, yeah, thank God, at least we're coping. Yeah. We're living, we're surviving. Nice, mm -hmm. nice. Okay. Now, look, um, how, let's start from here. Okay. How exactly did you make that transition to being a singer, right? Yeah. It's not the transition, actually. Were you an artist at any point in your life way earlier? Right, okay. <clears throat> so, yeah. Thank God you corrected yourself. You said not corrected yourself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's not... It's, I didn't... I'm not transiting to anything. I, yes. I used to sing. Yeah, I used to be a rapper. Mm. Then I started singing. But at that time, I always say this thing every time they ask me that. So at that time... Upcoming plenty past fans, you understand. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, yo, you're not making money from this thing and you're broke as fuck. And I just have to make money, you know. So I, I switched to um comedy. I started doing stand-up comedy. And then as at that time, the uh, stand-up comedy industry, you know, they allow newcomers. You have to lick ass, you have to, you know, call boss boss, they have, you have to wash their cars and clothes. Before they give you a chance to even say something. Did that ever happen to you? Mm hmm mm hmm But yeah, yeah. Is it by a prominent person that we know? No. It's the not? never even blew away at that time, sir. Till now? <laughs> Dude, at the time, the person blew, come on, blue. so yeah. <laughs> Yo, who is this person we're uh, talking don't about? Worry. Don't worry, I'm not Who is this person? No worry. Come on, man. Look, don't the essence of being here is to... Worry. See, look, if we want to make reference mm -hmm. to um, a great man, mm -hmm. Wizkid, Right? Yeah. Any great man. He said, even Solo, tell me, say, I know go blow. Right. And he called Solo's name in a song that yeah. blew throughout the whole country. Yeah. So now we know Solo. Yeah. Let us know your Solo. Yeah, don't worry. What? Don't worry. That, <laughs> I, that I hope one, it's not, don't worry, you plan to come as you on the no, show no, today. No, of course. I would, we'll go see Yan now. We'll go yeah, see Yan, but yeah. that one, it's not There's no need. It's, not it's, it's, it's cheap PR. Yeah, yeah you understand. So yeah? From there, I had, I had to like switch to um, skit making, you know? So... Yeah. How long was all of these? Um, how long was the, the, this? What was the time period for all of these things? From being a um, uh, an, okay. a, a rapper yeah. to a stand up comedian to yeah. so um, two thousand and two thousand and nine, I started I started rapping. I think I was I think two months after that Green died. Yeah, mm. I discovered that I could rap because. I was a very big fan. You discovered fan. you could rap. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I used to be a very big fan of that. You know, I'm still a big fan of his of his craft and God rest his soul. Yeah. And um I started rapping. Died doing one or two, started doing one or two, yo, 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 figure yo, figure yo, yo, yo. <laughs> and then <laughs> and then I realized that you have to have a lot of money to blow in the um uh, music industry. If you don't have connections, you get so 2009, 10, 11. 12, 13, I was still singing. I did not give up. In 2014, I switched careers. I started doing, I started doing stand up. 2014, 15, I saw that I don't think I have any space or anywhere to enter in this stand up comedy P. So. What were you, wait, pause. That period in stand up comedy yeah. or your attempt at stand up comedy, yeah. what was really going on, to be honest? What was really going on in my yes, life? Yes, where were you? Where were you first? Okay, was it so, were you in Lagos? I was in Lagos. Yeah, okay. I was in Ikurudu. I grew up in Ikurudu. I Kurudu, but okay. Yeah, so I was going from houses to houses. I mean, not house, 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 but like, you know, when they're having a show, a carnival, you know, secondary school performance and stuff. And I was quite funny as at that time because um, there's this thing, even before I started singing, 
if you're around me and I'm not making you laugh, then there's something going on with me. Probably I'm sad or probably I'm not happy myself. Okay. Because I always make sure that the room is is filled with you know, humor and so, and so many things. You understand? So then I started doing stand-up. I started doing stand-up. And that's how I got my, my name, actually. Because a lot of people say I'm a Yahoo boy. This guy is a Yahoo boy. Why is your name Uluwa Dollars? Why is your name Uluwa Dollars? Really? So yeah, I cracked the joke about dollars rising and falling. Then, 2000 and, 2013, 14. As at that time, dollars was you know fluctuating. So I cracked the joke about dollars rising and falling. People loved the joke, but they did not know my name. So they started calling me dollars whenever they see me. Ah, dollars are far. I'm like, hey, I did. Dollars, dollars, dollars. So there was a time this um, Olua is involved was trending. Whenever they yes. say something, you say Olua is involved. Yes. Yeah, so I just put, so, so when they say um, dollars, I'll say Olua dollars. Like, dollars, Olua is involved. Dollars, Olua is So that's how I came up with Olua dollars, Olua dollars, and it started going on like that. Really? Yeah. Did you ever think to change it? Nah. Even not, now, have you thought nah, of changing no, it? not changing that name, man. That name, that name helped me a lot, so. Yes, yeah. sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Now, um, talk to me about the process of having to lick ass or kiss people's behinds mm-hmm. in the process of trying to make it and giving up on that. <laughs> it was on that it was, uh, side of things. It was a very bad experience for me because uh, I, I am someone that naturally I love to um, help people. I love to sacrifice for people. People that are around me, they know. I just want to do something. Let's make sure that you're happy because I did not grow up being happy. You know, I grew up with a very shaky background. I lost my dad when I was two. And um, my uh, my dad's elder brother raised me. Not very well, though, but I mean, he tried his best the way he could. And then I could I could relate to when people are being maltreated. You know, because I was, I was really maltreated when I was young. You know, it was as bad as going to buy cigarettes inside the rain. That was how crazy what? it was. What? Yes. At the age of three, four, I was... I was already doing what a 11, 12 year old guy should do, you know? So my, one day my mom just came to the place and I'm like, you know what, I'm taking you away from this place. She took me to my grandma. So, you know, I already had- Why, this... weren't, you, why weren't you with your mom? So um, when, my, when I lost my dad, my mom was still um, uh, trying to learn how to be, I don't know what to call it. I think she was learning how to be a nurse. You know, she's a nurse now, a registered nurse. nurse school. Then she was, she's in nursing school, thank you. She's in nursing school and she was pretty young as at that time. So she couldn't, you know, raise me the way she should. She knows that she knew that she couldn't raise me the way she should because she's still busy. She's still a very young woman trying to make money, trying to be okay, you know. So my dad's elder brother was like, you know, bring him over here. Let's let's raise him. Since I'm his dad's elder brother, you know, so I that was in Imero, Aguayo Jai. So then I I went there. Did not know what was going on going on back at home in Ikorodu. Yeah. You know, and I do, I'm still young, so how many things would I be able to see when they come around to check? Yeah. You understand? But it was that bad. I was really maltreated at that time. And um, Who was sending you to go buy a cigarette in the dad's, rain? That was my dad's elder brother. Yeah. Is he yeah. still alive? Yeah, he is. He is. Are I, you guys still in contact? <laughs> no, come on, no. No? No, not, not because I hate him, you know, but because I've got other, other good people in my life that I, that I want to be there for. Has he tried to reach out to you? He has a couple of times. A couple of times, yeah. I mean, he doesn't even know that what he did was bad as at that time. So mm. I don't blame him. You know, everybody was, was... What was the worst thing that happened that you can remember growing as up? At that, as at that time? Yes. Worst thing that happened as at that time? Okay, there was one I could remember, you know, before, you know, this um, mentality of you are the eldest, so you go last. You mm-hmm. are the eldest, so you eat last. You are the eldest, you sleep last. Because he has, he, has he has his own children, but I was practically raising them as at that age. You know, wash your clothes, do this, do that, that, that. <coughs> as at that age, I was already selling iron on them. Like, I was just speaking. How old were you? Yeah, as I, I was five, four, five, six, around that time. And you weren't going to school? I was, but not school, school. I could miss a whole lot of, cl- a whole lot of classes. I did not even know that I was missing classes. You know, I was too young. All As at that age, they were already putting... It's in my head that I have to make money for the family. Yeah. Mm. I have to make money for the family. I have to do this. I have to be there for this. I have to be there for that. I have to be there for everything. Responsibility to a child. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? So, and I was the oldest child in the whole family. Yeah. Because my dad gave birth to me, as in gave birth to a child first in the whole family, amongst his brothers. You understand? So, I was, I was like the eldest. So, he always tell me, 
you are the eldest, you are going to eat last. Let all your brothers eat. The remaining one you eat. Do you understand? So I was already sacrificing a lot of things at that age. And I can't forget that in my life till I die. Hmm. Do you understand? So at the time, I started keeping iron. So when I'm coming back from school, pick iron, pick iron, keep it. When those guys are passing by, I give it to them. Oh, yeah, Alpha, they give me money. And So as at that age, you can imagine. So where was the money going? Of course, it was going to my pocket. I was trying to have money by myself because they barely give me money. They barely do this. They barely do that. It's crazy. You understand? Could they afford to? I don't know. I was too young. So I, I, I really can't tell. I don't know. That's why I said he didn't know that what he was doing was bad at that time. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. Now, um, things moved. Your mom picked you up. Yeah, so one day my mom just, she was just, I don't know what happened to her. She just, I mean, she's a, she, she's a prophetess, so I don't know. She just, I just saw her on bike. I was in the rain. I was going to get cigarettes. Yeah. I think I was five or six around that time. I was going to get cigarettes. I just saw my mom and I was so confused, like, yo, and she was like, sit on this bike. She didn't even go back to the house to tell them that she's picking me. She saw me on the road. She just put me on the bike and took me back to Korodu. So that's where she took me to my grandma and explained everything to my grandma. So my grandma, you know, started raising me, pampering me. No, then, I mean, she spoiled me a little. You know, because she died. <laughs> you know every, grandma, every grandma is like that. Yeah. I mean, the good ones. Yeah. Yes. The good ones. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. So all of these things... How would you say, if you were to interpret, how would you say it has affected you as an adult now? Because one thing is this. If you were in the U.S. and you experienced all of these things, mm. your the person enemy is a different ball game. It's therapy session at least like five times a week. Yeah. You know, all of these things, right? Yeah. But somehow, somehow, we... We we say we are tougher, mm -hmm. you know, basically. I'm not saying we're not, but I'm just saying that we kind of neglect mental health sometimes. Yeah. Right. How has that gone to affect you now? And how have you dealt with it over time? Okay, so um, at the time, I did not even know that I was mentally damaged. You know, because, you know, the kind of society we grew up in is, we grew up in is just... So, I didn't know I was mentally damaged until when I was, um, I think, 23, 24 then I started realizing that my childhood trauma is affecting me because I am not, I'm the type that, even till now, but I'm trying to like caution that a little. Till now, I want, I want to make sure that everybody's okay before I even take care of myself. Mm. You know, I want to make sure that everybody in the room is fine. You know, okay, use my duvet, you know, okay, do this, do that, okay, take. If I have a last card with me, I can give it to someone that needs it more than me before I even th think about myself. Mm. You know, so I, I thought I was just being nice. I, th I thought I was just a nice person. I didn't know I was mentally damaged. And so I saw a therapist and this person explained to me that, yo, you are mentally damaged. You are, because it's as bad as me. It's as bad as you wronging me and me telling you sorry. You know, I, I don't want to believe that you are wrong. I don't believe that I'm the problem. Everyone else is the victim. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? So whenever something goes wrong and I'll just be like, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I think, I, I feel like well, probably you're, Something is wrong with you. It's okay. You get. Don't worry. Don't tell me sorry. I'm the one who should be telling you sorry. You know. So people started taking a whole <laughs> advantage mm. of that. They were like, you. So I had some friends at, at, at the time, and they already knew that this was the kind of person I was. So they always like want to use it against me. You understand? Or until I saw a therapist, and okay. So one day I woke up in the middle of the night and I was like, Why am I always telling telling everybody sorry? This particular guy, guy did me wrong. He's supposed to apologize, but I'm the one calling him. He's not picking up my calls. Mm -hmm. I'm the one texting you. You're not replying my text. What the fuck, bro? You, you are the one that fucked me up here. What's going on? So then, I just, I just, I just went to. I, I had to look for a therapist. And you know how therapists can be scarce in Nigeria. <laughs> <laughs> so I went to see a therapist, and the person explained to me that you're just. So the person said, "Can you please tell me about your childhood?" And then I explained everything. And the person said, you know what? Go to your room. Act like you're sitting down and you're looking at your your, your, your um, younger self. You know, have a convo with your younger self. And you see that you are the one that needs to be mentally treated. It's not as if this poor, uh, you, are the, you are the problem. You are not the problem. They are the problem. Because of how you were raised, you know, Sometimes when you tell me thank you, I'll tell you no, don't tell me thank you. I'm supposed to do this. Do you understand what I'm saying? So that's how bad it was. But I thank God, I think I'm getting better a little bit. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Now, 
looking at where you are right now, you're among the leaders of your craft, um, one of the most followed on social media. Your comment section is always crazy. Mm -hmm. I'm in there somewhere. <laughs> you know, um, and all of that stuff. What's the process of being an actual content creator? What's your day-to-day -day of content creation? How do you guys come up with a lot of the stuff that you actually do? Saying this stuff, sorry, that you actually do. Saying this to say that, do you sit down, have a writing session, create these things, or, or you just carry phone or carry camera and just start shooting anything nah. that comes to mind? Or what is it like, basically? Nah, it is, trust me, it's not as easy as you guys see it. You know, it is a really crazy process. So this is it, yeah. The moment you drop a very funny co content, you're going to be scared of the next content you're about to drop. You're going to be very careful. You don't want to on blue. You don't want to... <laughs> is that <laughs> a real thing? Yeah, you're going to make this catch on blue. <laughs> blue and on blue. Yeah, you don't want to on blue because... You you want to do something better than what you've done before. Yes. So our process, my process, when I wake up in the morning, the first thing I do is sit on my bed, take a lot of water, and I start thinking of what happened yesterday. I try to bring out content from what happened yesterday. Ah, uh, got you. Do you understand? Yeah. So I'm like, okay, so yesterday from in the morning I did this, I did that, I did that. Oh, that's funny. I write it down. Oh, this is uh, that's funny. I write it down. Then I go to my crew. Yo, I have this idea. I crack it as a joke to them first. Like, yo, so this is what happened. Imagine da, 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 da. And I know my crew. I know everyone. I know every person. I know when they're trying to fake an expression and when they're being real. So when I just tell them and they're like, hmm, uh, uh, it makes sense. You know, and I scrap it. I just, when I start and they're like, ah, mad. Ah. Okay, that one makes sense. So then I write it down. I do my scripting myself. I write my stories myself. You know, from the short reels to the long videos to the YouTube content to the Facebook content and every other thing. I write them myself. You know, it can be overwhelming, but yeah, I do them myself. And when I'm shooting, I direct my content myself. So it's, it's really, very really stressful. So this brings me to one thing I noticed in particular. Yeah. There's a lot of, recently, I mean, there's been a lot of um, cross, cross um, content creators, skin making and all of that. A lot of people making stuff with a lot of people. Mm -hmm. You don't seem to make stuff with a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Your regulars are your regulars, mm -hmm. right? Um, one of the few times I remember is um, a, quite a number of stuff you did with Kiki. Mm -hmm. And then there's this new girl now. Kid Baby. Yeah, Kid Baby. And then, you know, all of these things. Why don't? Why does it look like you do not work with a lot of other guys within the space? So... I don't know. Is that the case? It's should I say it's a case? Am I right that you don't it, work it, with a lot of these? You know, guys? the thing is, uh I don't know, but I would say that I'm the kind of guy that I don't like to force things. You understand? I if I text you, hi, what's up, bro? What's good? Come make a content and it takes you 24 hours or 48 hours to reply me. I know that probably you're not feeling my energy. I like to stay in my I like to stay in my zone. How many times has that happened? A couple of times. Who did it happen with? A couple of a couple of people <laughs> that are blown. Uh, yeah, of course, of course. Yeah, yeah. How? Why? What happened? What was the so energy the thing like? Is, it, I, who I, was it? <laughs> you and this, your who was it? But who was it? <laughs> to be honest, let's know. Really? Okay. To be fair, who yeah. was it? I'm not saying that the person was for me, but the person did not answer. Yeah, I want to. If believe the person that didn't answer, that's what it is. Mm, I want to believe that they are busy. I want to believe that they for 48 hours. I want to believe that's that you're busy. busy. I want to believe that, you know, you don't want, probably don't want to work with this guy. Maybe you don't like his energy. You understand? So I said this um, on, on, a, on, a, on a program one time ago that most of, most of us in the content creating industry, we just want to show other industries that we love each other. But backstage, we don't. Hmm. It's the fact. It's pure competition. Really? It's pure competition. I want to do what this guy has done and even better. You know? I want to do what this guy has done times 10. You understand? So they, they want to be at the top. I want to be the one at the top. You know, in the music industry, I would say, I don't know what's happening backstage there, but I would say, okay, they still support each other. They do this. But you see, in our industry, yeah? <laughs> Don't worry, I make I just cut them for that side. But no, you don't need cut them. If that's what it really is, then mm -hmm. that's what it really is. Mm -hmm. Now, for the longest time, mm -hmm. we thought 
stand up comedy, mm -hmm. right? It's still on the comedy, but stand up comedy in particular yeah. was probably the most put together industry mm -hmm. until later we came, we just realized yeah. that, oh, um, Basket Mouth is He's not talking to AY. Yeah. This guy, Julius Agu, and this person took my dates for where I released. You know, so it's a lot of stuff that we don't know mm -hmm. that we would like to know. Mm -hmm. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. So if the industry is not as put together as we all thought it was, because we're seeing certain people make so, certain types of skate consistently and yeah. now no more. Yeah. So it, it's more like a carcass thingy. You know, it's more like this group of people, you can't just, you can't just say you want to just, you know. So why, why I'm saying this is because I've been in the industry now for 10 years or nine years, if I'm not mistaken. You understand. And we started, I started when it was, when it was 15 seconds. When we used to do, we fast everything. Bam! You have to make me laugh in fifteen seconds. That was when we started. That was the time of um, Aluta Emia, Demo Pumping, African Ape, now African Is, um, um, Suya Boys Comedy, uh, Maraji, Chris Clown, yeah. uh, uh, Wolia Ruli, uh, a couple of them. That was when I started. Those are the people I was looking up to. Just too funny, you know. And then, trust me, we support each other. You know, even as as small as, as I was in that circle, if I message her, blah, 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 do that, reach out for what's going on. What do you want? Okay, come to my house. Let's do a feature. You know, but now everybody is fine. Is I don't know. Everybody just wants to be the best. I want to be the one at the top, and nobody comes close. You understand? That's how that's how it is. You know, I just have a few of them that I can message and say, ah, oh, what's up, and they'll pull up, or ah, oh, what's up, they'll pick my call. Who are the guys that would pick? Nah, uh, Kiki, you know. Uh, yeah, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Kiki's my G, you know. So yeah. Kiki, uh, we gain. You see, it's even hard for me to... Bro, that's exactly what I'm saying. <laughs> you know, uh, 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 Shanks. Yeah. Um, uh, we gain. Kiki, Shanks, Officer Woos. Yeah. I'm trying to remember. Okay, Yemi so Alesho. So then, then the when you now have, when you have, you have. Um, okay, let's let me mention Macaroni. Is mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mr. Macaroni? Is he one of the guys you can call, or is he one of the guys that you must have reached out to, or you might have reached out mm -hmm. to? And Macaroni, when, when when he wanted to start, I think when he was diverting to comedy, I think it was in the it was in the Hollywood industry. When he was diverting to comedy, he was he was he came to me. In 2019, if I'm not mistaken, or 18, no, 19. He came to me in 2019 in Ikeja, Webiden, class suit. Shout out to you guys. That was where I used to shoot most of my content at that time. Yeah, so he came to me, was like, Alpha Baba, I want to do a content with you. I want to do a couple of content with you. And I don't want it to look like it's my content. I want to make people understand that you featured me, you know? You know, mm -hmm. so he used my camera guy, Eden Victor, you know? So, wait, Eden Victor is from you? Yes. We started 2017 together. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Look, I thought, and I'm sure a lot of people are on this with me. Yeah. A lot of us thought Eden Victor was from Macaroni. <laughs> so, Eden Victor, well, okay, so let me tell you how it happened. I used to shoot my content on my phone before. Yeah. Infinix Auto 2. That's what I was using then, 2016 stroke 17. I put it on landscape, I shoot my content, edit it myself. I was using Power Director. That was the app I was using yes. that time. It's you, you go put the logo for the side like yes. this. Yeah. So that was um that was what I was using. So one day I was running for I think I was late for a, a meeting. So the phone fell off my pocket. It broke, you know. So I was like, what am I going to use to shoot? I went home to meet my mom. Mom, Alpha, let me use your phone to be checking my Instagram, pending the time that I'm going to you know get someone that will be shooting or something. So then, and as at that time, I was also um trying to you know, put my, my craft on TV. Okay. You know, I was, I always think ahead. As I, that I, I think ahead a lot. You know, I overthink a lot. You understand? So, I was watching, okay, let me start from the beginning. I was watching um, uh, this, the late night show on Wazobia TV by Ogbolo. Okay. You understand? That's at that time. So, one day, he just uh, said, he said, if you have a program or if you have a clip Contents that you think stuff. that you want to give it, that you want to give to us, which has this so, so number. So, I wrote it down. And then I called him. Hello, sir. Hey, hello, what's up? Who is this? That's my name is Olua Dollars. 
it meant nothing then. So it was like, okay, so what do you want? And I said, I would like to put my content up on your platform. I saw your, I saw your, I said, okay, no problem. Bring your content down to me at VI. That's, um, I'm trying to remember the name of that address. I've forgotten. You know, was it BIFM, as cool FM, know, and know, all that. So that, that closed. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. So I was like, okay, no problem. So I, I picked up my mom's phone, all my content that was there. I picked it up. I went, I went to VI. Of course, I was very, very poor there. Not even broke, poor. You understand? That was, <laughs> I was very poor. So I went to do a decking. Jama Jama in Ikorodu. They gave me three, five. Yeah. So. What's decking? Decking. When you do it, when you're, as a bricklayer, you you do the roof of a, I don't know how to put it, but it's called decking. It's like, if you want to build a story building, the first, that first floor you have to build. Yeah. That um, um, cemented roof you have to build before you put the, the second house, the second floor on it. So that's what you were doing. That's what I, I had to do to get that money. And never hear anything. Mm-hmm. I I used to be a truck loader now for Dangote. I did load truck of noodles and and pasta in the Kurudu. That was what I was doing. I was even oh, come on. Let's not go there. So no, we should. I had to. We I had should to do. Be, and that 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 time that the, um, that truck loading, the money comes in two two weeks. No, a month. Sorry. A month. I was doing a part-time job. I was loading red block in one red block industry, same in Ikorodu. So what happens is when you go to the Dangote, um, when you go to the Dangote uh, company, there's this man there that picks people that can work. So if you don't get picked that day, I go to the red block industry to continue. I mean, you understand? So the red block industry pays me nine six every two weeks. And Nine thousand six hundred. Yes, every two, two ah, weeks. Big boy. Wait, every two, two what? weeks. No, sorry, I'm listening. <laughs> sorry. Every two weeks, and I have to give my mom like seven k inside because I mean there was nobody to support my mom then. I just lost. It just she just lost her, uh, her husband, which is my stepdad. So I was the first born. I'm the first born, so you know, of course. So two two weeks then, and I needed the urgent money, so I had to go to uh, this site. They call it site where they're building new houses. Yes. Yeah. So I did decking for a day. Because I said thirty five. I, I went, went to, to the island. Went to the island. Well, so I yeah. entered, I had to manage the money. So I entered a BRT. Then it was a blue BRT. As at that time, if I'm not mistaken. You have to enter the blue BRT from Ogolonto in Ikorodu. So I entered the blue BRT from Ogolonto to CMS. It stops at CMS. And I trekked from CMS to VI. What? Yeah, I trekked from CMS to VI. You trekked from CMS to, to VI. VI? No caps, man. I can't, I can't remember all the roads I passed. And then from CMS... I trekked, I trekked down to VI. That's where the... Um, the, the you trekked from CMS to VI. Yeah. <laughs> then it wasn't a big deal for me because I'm a, I'm a hungry man. And I want, I want to be on a bigger screen, you know? And I, as at that time, people don't really give a fuck about skids. They're like, what are you doing? Do you understand? I have a friend as at that time, um, Ty, was like, bro, I can't keep doing this thing with you. It's too childish. Yeah, what? yeah, that's what he said. <laughs> I was like, it's too childish. He knows, he knows. I'm sure we'll be watching this right now. <laughs> okay, so let's, let me, so I checked down to VI. That's um, Wazobia TV. Yes. Yeah. So when I got to um, the TV, I, I called him again that I'm at, I'm at the entrance. I was like, okay. So when I, I saw the secretary, the person at the yes, entrance, at the front like, so he said I should wait outside, like outside, not inside the, the where, where's that place called again? Not at the reception. At the reception, thank you. Said you should wait outside, outside. in so, the compound. Yeah, so I went outside. Abuela came to meet me outside and brought me in. So he brought me into the reception. I was like, oh, so where, where are your contents? And I showed him my phone. Like, he's here. He said, no, you have to put it in, in a drive. In a, no, in a disc. That's what he said. He said in a disc. And I'm like, in a disc? I'm like, ah, Baba, I checked all the way down from Samuels to this place. So it was like, no, it has to be... It, it, it can't be in your phone. It has to be in a disc. How do I put this on my on yes, my sir. platform? I'm like, okay, that's true. All right. So I told him, oh, I'm my trek all the way from. I said, oh, well, just keep going. Okay, no problem. So I went out, I trekked back to CMS, entered the BRT again, took me out to Golonto, trek from Golonto to Ibute. You can't know the distance, but I'm sure you could. People will know how far Golonto is to Ibute. So I got to Ibute, then I entered the Maroa back to my house. I went back to the decking, did another decking again for another money. We went to dub everything in a disc. So I think that took me like two, three days because, it's, I mean, I, I have to look for the money before I could dub it and everything. So I took the disc now again, the same process again to um, Bazubia TV. Getting there was like, okay, so what's up? I showed him this. I said, ah, 
and we just talked to the used dicks now saying our drive oh uh, no uh flash you know that flash now come on bro i'm not capping man i swear down it was like it has to be in the in a flash drive and i looked at him for like i think 10 seconds i'm like i thought about everything i went through Te- tears i started crying like yo okay I didn't give up. I went back again, the same process. I dumped everything in the flash drive. Again, I asked to look for money to buy the flash drive and everything. I dumped everything in the flash drive. I came back again and he goes, okay, so this is it, Tabi. Okay, no problem. I just put it in one of his bags. So that bag, I'm sure that, if I'm not mistaken, there should be at least like a oh, hundreds of flash drive in that bag. He just dumped it there. I'm like, okay, no problem. I'll get back to you now. And I was like, you say what? He said, I'll get back to you now. There's no problem. I'm like, Okay, I started calling and calling and calling. I went back now. I started calling and calling and calling and calling. Nothing. He did not pick my calls and stuff. I'm like, okay. All right, no problem. One faithful day, someone just told me, you know what? Get up. Still go there again. Go and ask for him that he's expecting you, that I have an appointment with him. Okay, so I went there. Ah, please, I want to see your brother. I said I should come. The person did not even answer me. Just I should sit down in the reception. I sat down there. And God sent this guy to me. He's a good chikudi. I don't know if you know him. He works with um, Nidu Wazobia. The tall, one tall, dark guy like that. He's a good chikudi. God bless you, bro. He saw me. He was like, what's up? What do you want? I said, I gave my content to Agbolo and he has not heard you. Oh, no, no, no. He's not Agbolo now. Let me Is he just... husband material you're talking about? Husband material, thank you. Oh, okay. Husband material, exactly. Husband material. So I was like, ah, no, 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 no. So he said he was going to take me to meet the um the director for content, which is Kate, as at that time, Kate. Mm. So he said, I'll take you to the let's go, let's go. So as I was going, um Ali Baba came in. Which Ali Baba? Ali Baba. This the not, only Ali Baba. The only Ali Baba. He came in and was so so then Ali, Ali Baba came in and is a good said, ah, snap it, Baba, snap it, Baba. I said, ah, I said, say snap. Then he told Ali Baba, sir, this is the next big thing. Oh. He did not know me from anywhere. Oh. He didn't know me from anywhere. Like Facts. He didn't know me from anywhere. He just, oh, this is the next big thing. Was, take picture, take picture. And I stood beside him and he took, I have the picture, it's still on my page down, down there. So he took, he took the picture for me and took the, and I posted it and I'm like, ah, Alibaba and all that. Then he took me to meet Kate. Then Kate told me that, ah, no, this content, let me not lie to you. It can't go up online. You share it with your phone. You have to show it with the your phone. The quality. Yeah, the quality yes. can't go up. Yes. So you have to show it with your, with a camera. You understand? And I'm like, Pog, but I saw these things. It's, it's, I showed him with the video on my phone. Why didn't you just tell me that I showed him with the camera instead? You understand? Instead of me going like three times, you understand? So he said, so he said, no. So I told Kate that no problem. I would go home and shoot with camera and bring the content back. He said, no problem. So I came back home and I sat down. Where I won't get a camera like this? You know, coincidentally, that was the time that my phone spot. the mm-hmm. Infinix Hot 2. So then I was just scrolling on my um, Instagram with my, my mom's phone. In the uh, in the notifications there, I was just scrolling and scrolling. Then I saw then Victor's comment. I uh, I shoot I shoot and edit. Contact me. You just you know now you know how they bomb now. You just yes, bomb everywhere. Yes, yes. So I saw him like who's this guy? I clicked on it. I remember his dip at that time. He was with a black magic. So, so I knew okay this guy is a is a camera person. So I DM'd Adam. Adam Alpha. Not Adam. I said what's up, bro? Do you shoot? He said yes, I shoot. I said okay, no problem. Can you come to Ikurudu to shoot? I was like ah Ikurudu. I said. No, you're safe, no problem, just come. How much will you charge? He said, ah, he won't charge me for anything that himself now upcoming, you understand, but I will have to pay to rent the camera, the camera from... we're going to use. Yes, yeah, from one, from a guy called Tunde Eko. Tunde Eko now shoots content now. Tunde Eko, the... Yeah. Um, what's he called? Yeah. Lawyer. The lo- no, no, no. Tunde Eko is... Tunde Eko, not no, lawyer. No, that's Timi Agbaje now. Tunde Eko... He's, he's in... He oh, he's not a lawyer, but he wears, he wears a, a white with a tie. black... And he's uh, always... And, he's almost yeah, tired, so yes. as at that time, he was, he was properly into um, just shooting. He wasn't doing content then. You get So he said he was going to... I was living with that guy and he's going to have to rent the camera from the guy. That the guy is his friend. You understand? So I said, okay, how much? He said 5K. Then I should just do like 7K for transport for him too, you know. I could get no problem. I can afford 7K. As a bad guy now, Jama Jama Sharp. Go back again. I went to Jama Jama for like a week... I sent the money to Eden Wafa. He came with the camera. Um, Canon 60D. That was the camera I was using as at that time. So he rented the camera. Can I still go on? Yes, please. So he rented the camera. Uh, he brought it to the to Kurodu. We shot like five or four content. But I, I, resh- I reshot most of the content that I had done with my phone. 
You yes, understand? So it's clearer. Yeah, so it's clearer. I shot the content. Adam liked the whole content and was like, this is, this I'm mad, bro. I can be working with you time to time and everything. I said, no problem. So let's, let's start working. So I took the content to Kate this time around with a lot of confidence, you know, because I mean, yes, I'm, I'm higher ready, quality, yeah, yeah. higher quality. And I went there and she was like, ah, mad. You're very funny. Before I got back to the house, I was already seeing my content on Wazobia TV. Before I got back to the house, before I got back to the bus stop. So imagine you trekking all the way from Mugunoto to Ibute, where I was staying at that time, Ibeshi rather. I got from the bus stop, people were looking at me. I hey, just see for Wazobia And I'm like, okay, okay, I think I'm getting famous. Okay, okay. Yeah. Be so sweet. Be sweet, you get. <laughs> so then I, I went home. Adam called me, mad, bro, this is mad. The second day, Adam came, started shooting back By to back. By himself, without Baba, phones. no worry yourself. <laughs> started <laughs> shooting, move. yeah. Then Crack TV was always reposting my content. Shout out to Crack TV too. They were always reposting my content. I dropped the repost. I dropped the repost and everything. Now, moving on, right? I don't <laughs> yeah. want us to dwell. Um, yeah. Moving on to different points in life, right? Um... I don't know if I'm okay to say this, okay. but you're working on a particular project about your life story. And I think it would actually make for a very good movie. Of course. To be very honest. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, what is that about? It's gonna be it's gonna be a documentary about my grass to grace story. Yeah. It's gonna be a documentary about so many things that I learned in the hard way. Mm -hmm. uh, it's gonna be a documentary about how I come up with my story people that I have supported in the industry that did not turn up back for me. You know, a couple Who of are them. these people? Why don't you want to say their <laughs> names here? Let's even understand that this is the beginning of the story. You know, a couple of people, you know, you should understand, I dropped, I dropped the EP, yeah? An, an EP. Yes, last year. not one single, not one single skit maker or comedian <clears throat> Why? supported. I don't know. Did you reach out of course, support. trust me, I reach out to almost everybody. And bust your head, I still support the people when they reach out to me. Even after I dropped my EP and they didn't support, they still reach out to me and I'm still like, sure, no problem. Is Nas Boy a part of them? No, of course not. Nas Boy, I, I understand Because there's I understand a situation that. where you, uh, Yamali said something, um, you know, made a comment about mm -hmm. Nas Boy yeah. and you were one of the few people that actually stood up for mm -hmm. him. Yeah. And coincidentally, or lovely situation, mm -hmm. both of you are probably like the flag bearers of skate makers that actually make music. Yeah. No, Nas Boy is a very good guy. One very good guy that I like a lot. But as at that time that I dropped my EP, in my EP, he was still promoting the song. So of course, I'm not, I'm, I don't want, I, I wouldn't have to inconvenience my, my, uh, you for you to help me do something. I understood. Though he told me that, ah, oh, but I know where I go support you. But I, I know that he wasn't because he was still pushing his own song. So, of course, you can't just leave your craft and start pushing somebody else's craft. Why know? does this sound like, I mean, I like Nas Boy as well, but why does this sound like you're making excuses for him? I'm not making excuses for Nas Boy. I'm trying to put myself in his shoes. You, Sydney Talk and yourself, are you guys friends? Oh, yeah, we're friends. I went to his um the show he did. I think that was um Influencers Fest. Yes, at the I went end there, of the year. Of course. As a matter of fact, um Sydney came when Sydney landed Lagos, he lived with me for like three, four months. He lived in my house for like three, four months. So yeah, Sydney's Sydney is a friend of mine. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so of course. We were close at the time. Did he support your music as well? No, he didn't. No, no, nah, he didn't. So who did? Who did? <laughs> uh, who did support my music? Nobody actually. Just um, um, is Bayou, which is a very good friend of mine too. You know, one of the guys that I also supported while while it was upcoming. You know, is Bayou did, but I posted on the story like, oh, the power does drop EP, nice one. I love this. You know, so but I mean, I don't know, I don't know how they see me, but I would say nobody, literally nobody. Nobody supported my music. Okay, Officer Woos, yeah, good guy. I went to his house. Immediately I got to his house, I was like, I have an idea. Let's shoot a video. I didn't post the video because I could not I, I could not continue. If I post that video, that would be the only video I, that I will post, you know? For the con for, for the, the, for the, the promotion, record. for the record you get. No other person had there the time. There was no follow-up. No, there was no follow-up. I went to Shanks too. Shanks said he was ready, but I think he was busy. I'll just give them excuses. I'll help them create excuses. You understand? Shank said he was busy. No, he didn't say he was busy. But I went to his house. He said we were good. He, he gave me an idea. Said that I was come and shoot it with him. So, 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 so time. Called. He was busy. And I just had to let it go. 
So yeah, mm. after but those two But you see, people, I, I still think... see a lot of these people that you name in the comment section when you do those your, uh, the when you did that your adaptation of Shay vibes mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and you did your this and you did your yeah, that and yeah. it moved from funny stuff to people paying attention to say, look, man, this is sounding interesting. Yeah, you said this dude actually can sing. Yeah, you know, people yeah. start paying attention, but a lot of these people were in the comment section hailing you as well. Yeah, so the thing is. Like I said earlier, these niggas would um, want to make other industries feel like they're supporting, they're supportive. Yeah, but everybody's fighting for their head. Everybody is trying to, everybody's on a project or the other, you understand. Uh, okay, Bridgewater supported my first single that I dropped, which is, uh, no, not first, second, available, mm -hmm. available that I did. Yeah, he supported. I went to meet him at the location set. I'm like, bro, what's up? I need to do this thing with you. He said, no problem. He posted his production and we did a skit together that I posted. Even a collaborative post, you understand? So yeah, Th so those are the people that I, can men that, I can that I can mention. The rest, I don't... That's about three out of 25. <laughs> yeah. It's just reality. Yeah, it's just reality. So I want to believe that probably because my EP came out during the festive period, that was December 15th. So I feel like maybe they are... Busy, bro. I feel like yeah. you're making excuses for them as well. <laughs> Again, if whoever's going to support you is going to support you at the yeah, end of the yeah, day, you're right and about it's true. That. You're right it's about true. That. Yeah. But it's all right. Now, um, you're at a point where I'm going to say you're taking music seriously as well. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know what I mean? You're releasing yeah. EPs and all of that mm -hmm. stuff. What's the plan for 2024 as a, as a uh, content creator, as a comedian, and also an artist? Because you are an artist. <laughs> yeah. So um, this year, I'm going to be, I'm going to focus on both. I, I mean, a lot of people have advised that you can't do both. They get jealous. Those, these talents get jealous. When you focus on music, you start losing your stamina in, in, in comedy. And when you focus on comedy, you start losing your stamina in, in music. But I don't believe that. I feel like I can do both. You understand? Because these are the two two talents that I love amongst many talents that I have. But these are the two talents that I really love so, so, so much. And I don't think I'm going to let go of the both of them or any of the both or any of them. So yeah, I'm going to be dropping more songs. I'm going to be having more features, you know? And as, as a matter of fact, that's why we shout to me in the DM. I was like, yo, bro, when I land Ninja, we are doing a song together. You know? And I was like, oh, Mark, nice this? this was, I think, last two, three weeks. I can't remember. But he messaged me. I so said, should we expect that? Should we expect a record from both of you? Of course, we should. I'm that also would be mad. I'm also expecting that. I don't know. But he said when he gets to Nigeria, he's going to reach out to me. We're going to have a song together. I said, no problem. That's I'll, a dope record. That's, that's, that's a P that yeah, I would like. I said he's a real G. So, I mean, that's why he's, real, he's a real G. So, yeah. And as for my comedy, I'm also going to be doing content. I have a lot of projects coming. But I think I'll be having, I'll be focusing more on the documentary I want to do. Yeah. First, yeah. I'm focusing on that because I really want it out so bad. So yeah, I'm working on that as well. So yeah, that's does it, for this does it, How does it feel to... Does it sometimes hit you that you're existing on your own? You're doing well. You're doing mm. very well. But it's still by yourself. <laughs> mm, looking, at, looking at the way I came through for most of the influencers and content creators you see now, yeah, it, it hits me sometimes like, yo, wow. So these guys could not just return this favor. Not return, return. I'm really, if I do something, I don't expect you to do it back. But I feel like when you see that I need this thing, you should, yo, because there's a time that literally I could say in the two bedroom apartment that I was in there in Lekki around 2018, I could say 30% or 40% of the industry was living in my house. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. 30% of them were living in my house. From Sydney to his manager, his old manager, Tassanda, to Z Fancy, to uh, Lord Lamba, to his BU, to a couple of them, some visits and leave. But as at that time, if you don't come to my house, you're not serious yet. If you don't pay me a visit, as at that time, not that I told them to pay me a visit, but <laughs> it's just a rumor going on then. I did not even know that that was what was going on. Until I heard it outside that uh, they say, if, if I don't come your house, I don't go blue. And I'm like, <laughs> how did you hear that? Where did you hear that from? But I noticed that every time, every day, new talents, new content creators come to my house. You know, I, I don't go even their house. I go just they come back from work. And I I'll just see, new person. who are you? Uh, so my name is Gentle. Oh, Gentle, Alpha, bad guy. I know you now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Now let's do content together. We do, and that's it. Lamba, Alpha now. 
if I, Lamba is someone that I thank God for, you know, because the way I started living in my house was, um, I was celebrating my birthday. Sydney organized a um, a birthday surprise for for me. The I could say literally eighty percent of the industry was at my house. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that night I did not even know that was. So I did not know there was something going on. So Lamba was among them and everything. So the birthday was done. <laughs> the birthday was done the next day. Lamba was still there. I mean, I'm not the kind of person that that knows how to say leave my house. You know, I'll just be looking at you. Lamba came as a guest as a for guest your and he started living there. And he started, he started living there. Did he I, have a conversation with you to no, say? Oh. No, I was okay with it. I'm like, okay. That was kind of Who person. invited Lamba? I think it was Van Josh. It came with Van Josh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it came with Van Josh. I think Josh was even mad. Like, what, what's, what's wrong with this guy? Leave now. And Lamba did not leave because the owner of the house did not see anything. You understand? So he was there until his mom gave me the... Uh, he called his mom. His mom talked to me. and like, thank you so much for being there for my child. Though. And then I'm like, okay, so I have no choice. I just... <laughs> he just keep it. <laughs> just, just, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I'm so happy for him. I'm looking at him now. I'm like, so happy for him. Like, yo, you're really big now. I tell him sometimes, like, do you remember how we started? Do you remember how we did roast ourselves? Because the kind of thing we do then in my house, we always roast each other so that we could do better. So if you do a skit and you come, you, you show it to the old people in the house, everybody will keep a straight face. Everybody's going to laugh. So you'll be like, ah, this thing is not funny. You go and do more. You understand? Do better. Yeah, so that was how we were growing ourselves then. Even me, if I cracked you, everybody would just throw a face. You know? But the way girls, yeah. you know, push everybody. Come. Yeah, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking, I'm Yeah, joking. I understand. But that was how we were growing ourselves from SBU, Lord Lamba, all of us then. That's mm -hmm. how we were growing ourselves. And now... We are okay with us. If you criticize us, we're just looking at you like this. You know how many critics we don't get? Yeah. We don't yap ourselves for inside us. You want the you want the wine yourself. Sure, you understand. So that was it then. That was it. Then. And then it's just growth. Just growth, yeah. To yeah. where you are now. To where we are now. To hoping to do better. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if you were to advise another young chap from Ikorodu, mm -hmm. how would you advise? Leave Ikorodu first. What? Yeah. Leave Ikorodu first because I don't know about now, how Ikorodu is now, but at that time in Ikorodu, then if you are talented and you are in Ikorodu, your talent will be within Ikorodu. Because there was a way they already, I don't know how to maybe I'll call it stigmatize us then. If you if someone calls you Afa, ah, uh, nice jokes, where do you stay? Ikorodu, pam, 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 pam. You don't cut call. Mm. Do you understand? They, they see us as criminals. They see us as touts and stuff. But I don't know now, Shao, but then I had to leave Ikorodu. I had to leave. So I will tell you how I left Ikorodu. So um, there was this company back then, BWE, BWE Studios. They were in Osaka, London then. So I used to, I mean, they were promoting one song, nobody got what we got. One guy like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, the, the, the person representing uh, BWE was Moses. We call him Bossex. You understand? So I reached out to him that, yo, why don't you just sign comedians? You know, instead of artists, artists, sign comedians, you can make instant money. You know, because with, with comedians, we always get jobs every day. Yes. We always advertise every day. You collect percentage. I mean, so you can use that money now to, you know, grow us, grow the brand. I mean, get the name. So I was like, sure, I like that. That's a good idea. So he invited me to... Um, Osapa London, then in Lekki. I took ferry from, uh, I was already okay, and I was already having change. So I took ferry from, from Ikorodu to the place. I went to his place. It was, his mouth was so sweet. Don't worry. Ah, uh, don't worry. So what we're going to do for you? We're going to shoot you a movie, uh, a cinema standard movie. We'll get you an apartment. So it was me, Exploits Comedy, just funny, yeah. Just funny, yeah. Uh, it's, yeah, so comedy. Just like. funny. Bagan Moncha. That I don't know where yes. it is now. You know Bagan Moncha, yeah. Yes. Bagan Moncha. So it was the four of us then. So it was like, it's gonna get us an apartment where we're gonna stay all together as a family. Then do um, a car. You get us a car. We would also shoot a standard movie for us, but we'll be collecting forty percent of our of our um, job of our income. So that means we'll be getting paid. And give us 60% of what we get got paid. You understand? I'm like, okay, that sounds fair. Because me, I just need to be on the island. So I was not really concerned about that. You see, the moment we signed up people like this, as we did sign like this, the story changed. We went from being the his artist to being a staff. You understand? Yeah, it was crossing his 40%, but he wasn't doing anything. 
So me and Espers were like, you know where things go up? We we'll go to stay for the hotel. Yeah, he, he had an hotel in El Castillo. We we'll go to stay for the hotel. Since no one give us house because we can't keep paying for a hotel on the island. We're sitting on the island. We have to pay for hotel rooms and stuff. So I stay in there. My guy Fumigate us come up for that hotel. Live. Just told us that we need to leave. That they want to fumigate the whole hotel. I know like he's joking. The house over a year, over six months or seven months, you've not you're 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 collecting 40%, yeah? And you're not, the house is not there, the car is not there, nothing is there. Guy, we are staying in this hotel to so provide all these things. The guy just called, they just gave me gates. And then I was with Tokwe, and Tokwe was like six years old as, as at that time. Bro, we he threw, younger, brother. We threw, yeah, we threw our load from the balcony down. We we're rushing down, down to, to, the, um, to, the, to the car park. This guy fumigated the hell out of us. We left, we just had to leave. Then we, we, I was now homeless. I was homeless during, uh, I think, 2018. I was homeless throughout 2018. As the year, dollars, dollars, dollars at that time, I don't get where I stay. Sometimes we have to go and sleep at the hotel, at the hotel lounge. The, we could just do hotel lounge. The, the, the next morning, we move again. We don't need jamma jamma up and down. It was Auntie Tony, Tony Abraham, that reached out to me one day. She was just like, dollars, are you okay? I don't know how she knew. Are you okay? I said, Mama, I'm not okay. Oh, that was why I, um, that was class suit. I was staying in class suit. I was sleeping in class suit then. That's the place we were shooting. I told you they were shooting the content in Okwebi. So I was sleeping in class suit then. Yeah, but are you okay? I said, ah, Mama, I'm not okay. Oh. You read, though. I said, what, what, what? What's I said, Mama, I'm homeless. I don't have where I'm staying. And I can't go back to Kurodu. Why would I go and stay to my mom? I can't go back there. She's like, ah, I have a spare room in my house now. Come. So you lived with Tony Abraham. It'd be like a joke. It'd be like a joke. We got to, uh, there she was staying in Lucky County. Me and Van Josh, we went there. She just showed us the room. She said, you can be staying here. And I'm like, are you serious? I said, yes. And we started staying in a room in Auntie Tony's house then. And that was how I met some a guy, KNC. The guy started supporting my craft and that was how I got my own apartment. So I stayed in Auntie Tony's place for like, if I'm not mistaken, almost a year. Yeah, almost a year before she moved out of the house. I know how the cars can be now. You just, uh, you know, the owner of this place is not, you know, you know. we have to leave. So that's how I left. I, I had a friend then, KNC. KNC now rented an apartment for me that I had to keep up. That was the apartment I told you that people were staying with me with. And, yeah. That is, that is crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, actually. That is absolutely Look, man, I feel like we have to do a part two of this conversation, <laughs> to be honest. Because plenty, the long, uh, Jesus, the talk plenty, the talk actually. The plenty, yes. Uh, the yeah. talk long and he plenty. Yeah. All right, but I want to get back to the point where you said advice to leave Ikorodu. Okay, yeah, so leave Ikorodu. Or, I don't know, but because it, it, that, that place wouldn't make you, it won't help you think wide. It will just, I don't know. As I, For me, maybe I don't know, but for me, I had to leave Ikorodu. Though I was already getting famous in Ikorodu, yeah? But I was like a local champion. You understand? So I had to leave Ikorodu for me to up my game. For me to, you know, grow. For me to learn how to dress. For me to learn how to use PEF. <laughs> Do you understand? Wow. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, I had, to, I had to leave Ikorodu. But if you are in Ikorodu, if you are from Ikorodu and you know you're, you're talented, just keep doing what you do. Don't relent. And please open your eyes. You don't have to leave Ikorodu. You can leave, leave, leave. But you can, you, you need to like. Try and see opportunities <laughs> outside. Come on, there are better opportunities out there. Out there. You can just come up for the small. To open eyes, to know that, to see how talented you are. Because I had to leave Ikorodu for me to know how talented I was. Mm. You understand? So you need to like open your eyes. To see how up your, talented To up you your are. game. Yeah. All right, man. Look, I'm serious. We have to do a part two. Are you down for that? <laughs> I'm down for you, man. All right, my bro. Thank you so much for coming through. Um, uh, guys, look, man. Look forward to the live performance session. It's absolutely amazing. Yes, you're going to see. Have you done any live session before? Uh, yeah, once. No, I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> this live session, yeah, is the shit. <laughs> you know, 2024 style. At least you've not done this yet. I've not done this yet. Yeah, baby. 2024 <laughs> style, new energy, new me kind of stuff, and also fired up as well, bro. Thank you so yeah. much. I appreciate yeah, your presence. Nice to be here we well. have to do another one. Yeah. All right, guys. We out. Welcome, everybody. My name is Olami De Ogunle, also known as Oluwa Dollars. I'm live at Echo Room. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Like, 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 um, uh -uh. subscribe. 
Uh-huh, you game out. Nice one. <laughs>